Let's start with holy water. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, Alpha Omega, Sator, Arepo, Tenet, Opera, Rotas. God the Father, the Most High, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, God of Holy Ghost, of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All the archangels, Saint Michael, Saint Jopial, Saint Samuel, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Uriel, Saint Setikel, and all our guardian angels. Hail Kahata Tomini, Hail Kahata Tomini, Hail Kahata Tomini. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, and all the saints in heaven. Grant me, O Lord, the power to my hands for wiping of all stain, so that without defilement of my mind and body, that I might serve you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Blessed be the Lord my Lord, who trained my hands for war, and my fingers for battle. My mercy, my sacred, my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in which I take refuge, who subdue people under me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Pater Nostra, qui es in Cielis, Antipitet Turnomen Tuum, Ad Benia Regnum Tuum, Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo, Ad in Terra. Pater Nostrum Quotidianum, Tet Nobis Odie, et dimite nobis dimite nostra, sicut de nos dimitimus territoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amano. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mother Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nun en in hora multis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, et Spiritu et Santo, sicut in et principio, et non es semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Abba, Sator, our Father, the Almighty who created heaven and earth. Abba, Sator. Give the ascent of faith. You know what faith is. 
You are very, I consider you the pillars of the church. I know you. You know your Catholic faith. You're well educated in it. You love it. That's why you're here. Uh, this ministry is called Fullness of Truth. I like it. I really like that title. Fullness of Truth. Okay. Well, if I ask you what faith is, you all who are full of truth, I know you get it right. Now, there couldn't be more than two people in this big auditorium who wouldn't get that right. If I said, hey, what's the definition of faith? Now, I know you all get that. Only two or three wouldn't get it for whatever reason. But, but for the sake of the two or three, I'm going to help you out. Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God. Now, you all probably get that right. But that's not good enough. Then most people think, you, that, well, if I believe that God exists, that's faith. Wrong. Prove it. Okay, glad you asked. Satan believes in the existence of God. Hmm? Where is he? So we got to finish the definition. Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God, believe all that God has said and revealed to us. I don't believe it if you don't know what it is. And believe all that Holy Church proposes for our belief. Because he who has revealed it is truth itself. I'll go through it one more time. Faith is the theological virtue by which we believe in God. Believe all that God, notice it doesn't say part of what God has said. It says all of what God has said and revealed to us. And believe all that Holy Church proposes for our belief. Why? Because it's plausible? Because it fits in with my millennial lifestyle? No. Because he who has revealed it is truth itself. That's why I accept it. I give the assent of faith, whether it sounds good or not, whether it suits my fancy or not. I give the assent of faith, and then the light of reason will be given. That's a very key principle. So you're going to change. You're going to renew your mind. You're going to put on the mind of Christ. That metamorphosis from a lower thing to a higher thing, Got to have faith. You've got to have faith. You've got to believe everything, everything that Jesus has given to us through his church. That's number one. Faith. You've got to have faith. You've got to have hope. I talked about hope last night, theological virtue, by which we desire heaven and eternal life above all things. Trusting not in our own strength, but relying on on the grace of the help of the Holy Spirit. That's hope. And what about charity? Uh, charity is to love the Lord your God with your whole heart, mind, and strength. To love God above all things for his own sake. And to love your neighbor as yourself out of love for God. Faith, hope, and charity. That's a good place to start. Then if you're going to reform, if you're going to repent, and I suggest we do this. You see, I'm giving this Lenten retreat before Lent. You know, you, know, you, you give it in Lent. It's too, it's too late. You're getting it first. I'm getting you ready for Lent. Lent is a preparation, but you, you're hearing it right now. Come Ash Wednesday in a couple days, you're going to be ready. You're going to have the best Lent you ever had. If you don't, it's your fault. Now, repent. For us Catholics, if we have, if we're conscious of sin, <laughs> and we all now and then need to be conscious of sin or we have a dead conscience. Not like one time during Lent I was hearing confessions and I was in a confessional. You know, I couldn't see anything, of course. And people came one after the other and you can hear them come in. You know, they kneel down. You hear those sounds. Priests hear those sounds all the time. And they began, oh, well, mm, bless me, Father. Well, I don't have any sins. I never heard, I heard everything, but I never heard that one before. And I could tell it was a young man's voice. And I said, oh, well, well uh, that's great. You don't have no sin. How come you're here? Oh, well, I said, your mama made you come. That's right. I said, well, let me help you. And I helped him make a good confession. 
went through the commandments. If you're going to change your life, if you're going to reform, repent, and believe, uh, you've got to have some, some guidelines. God gave us the Ten Commandments. He gave them to Moses in the Old Covenant as a gift. And they've been handed down to us. Now, the Ten Commandments have never changed and never will. There will never be nine of them or eleven. And contrary to what a lot of people think, Vatican II didn't change them to the Ten Suggestions. They're still the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments given by God, and they oblige always and everywhere, and no one has the power to dispense from them. That's a teaching right out of the Catechism. And so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one of those very simple, old-fashioned things, that kind of in-your-face truth. I'm going to go through them to help you get ready for Lent, because if you're going to repent, at least you've got to know that there's such a thing as sin. What are you repenting from? Sin. I've got to repent. Well, I'm a sinner. Sinners repent. Jesus said, I have come not for the self-righteous. Those are the ones who think they don't have any sins. I have come not for the self-righteous, but for sinners. Oh, praise the Lord. He's come for me. That's good. That's very good. I have hope. And let me say right at the outset, don't any one of you ever believe that your sins are bigger than God's mercy. Please don't believe that. Can you imagine that? A lot of people do, you know. A lot of people feel so guilty. You know, they say, oh, God could never forgive me. I've been so bad for so long. Like, I was up in uh, Wisconsin, way up around Green Bay, Wisconsin, preaching. And it used to be the land of lumberjacks, you know, Paul Bunyan and so forth. And I gave a talk to Lent one time, and I gave a little joke to start it off. And I said, all the lumberjacks came to confession on Saturday. And uh, they was a, really a tough bunch. You know, they're rough guys. And, uh, they, but they were intimidated going to confession. You know, they're kind of scared. So they put the toughest lumberjack right up in front. They put him right at the headline and said, well, well, we'll let him go first. He's a tough guy. So he went in. He said, oh, bless me, Father, for I have sent out, Father, he said, geez, I, I've broken every commandment in the book. I, I don't know where to start. And the priest says, well, now have you committed murder? And he said, well, no, I didn't do that. Well, you see, you haven't examined your conscience. Now go outside the box, examine your conscience, and come back in. And the lumberjack was really relieved. He went outside the confessional and he yelled back to his crony, no use today, boys, only here in murder cases. <laughs> something you got to know what to repent of you got to let the ten commandments guide you inform you they're kind of like lighthouses uh, out on the ocean you know how a lighthouse will keep a ship off the rocks uh, from shipwreck number one God's talking to us personally I the Lord am your God and you shall have no other gods beside me it's about idolatry now, you remember from the Old Testament about idolatry, where they would make a golden idol, like they made the golden calf, remember, in Moses' own day? It really aggravated Moses. He came back, and, and he, he, he said to, to Aaron, who, who, <laughs> said, well, what's this? You know, I'm gone for a little while. I come back, you made a, an idol out of gold. He said, well, we just threw some gold in the furnace, and this calf came out. That was the most lame excuse in the history of salvation. idols today. Oh, we don't make them out of, uh, out of uh, uh, precious material, but I'll tell you what, gold is still an idol. I'll guarantee you in the United States, the biggest false god is money. And there isn't any question about that. We spend all of our time and effort pursuing wealth. And then in the process, we become emotionally disturbed. And that's why Prozac is the number one selling prescription drug in the entire world. We spend all of 
our time and effort getting money, and then we spend all of our money trying to get well. Absolutely insane. Why? Idolatry. Money can be an idol. Sin against the first commandment. You don't put God first. I'll give you a little clue, a little key to it. God first, everybody else second, you last. Know what happens then? The fulfillment of a promise, a miracle, and the last shall be first. So put God first, put everybody else second, you come last. Be a servant. Come always as a servant. You say, why should I do that? Because Jesus said so. He says, I have come to serve, not to be served. He said, the servant's no better than his master. The master did it. Come as a servant, husband. Serve your wife. Wife, serve your husband. A lot of times the, the husbands think they know those but scripture. They say, oh, no, it says in the Bible, wives be submissive to your husbands. Lousy translation. Husbands and wives defer mutually to each other out of love for Christ. It's not one-sided, okay? Now, Dad may be the head of the family, he is, but he's got to highly esteem what Mom has to say because Mom has plenty to say, and if he forgets that, he'll find out. <laughs> Which brings me to another point in about repenting and believing in the gospel. Every land it happens, you know, I'll be hearing confessions in a parish someplace, and... Um, lady might come in, oh, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. A nice, sweet old lady, quite often. Well, you know my no-good husband. Do you know what he did to me? And then she'll confess all her husband's sins. <laughs> and the men do it, too. And I gotta say, hold on, who sins you confess? I can't give you absolution for him. All right, put God first. No idols, no false gods. Number two, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Don't use God's name to curse. You know, when I was young, sad to say I did it. I was around it all the time. I mean, I have heard everything and not much offends me. To this day, I can take, I can sit in the middle of a bunch of motorcycle guy and guys, and they can use horrible language and I can pretty much let it roll off. I can take it, you know. I've been there, but don't you dare use my Lord's name as a curse word. That's where the line is drawn. Don't use the holy name of Jesus to curse. Don't use God's name in vain. Got to do it. If you're going to reform and change, make a resolution that you're going to respect and reverence the holy name of God in all its form. You know, the name of Jesus is so powerful. If I could tell you one thing, you know, if you're in trouble, if you're suffering, and you don't have the strength or the energy or the knowledge to pray in any formal prayer, you're just so beat down. My advice to you, just repeat the holy name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, I have had situations where Satan attacked me so violently in my life that I thought I was literally going to die physically. The name of Jesus on my lips was like a weapon that struck down the adversary. Right where he stood in all his ugliness, he runs. You don't want to mess with the holy name of Jesus. That word means God saves. That's what Jesus means. Savior, oh God save. Don't use God's name to curse. You've got to repent if that's what you do. Repent and believe in the gospel. What's the gospel? The, the word means good news. Do you know what the good news is? Oh, you find people filled with truth. The good news, i got to tell you, the good news isn't something. The good news is somebody, and his name is Jesus. That's the good news, period, exclamation point. And so be filled with that good news, who is Jesus. Don't use his name to curse. Remember to keep holy the Lord's day, the Sabbath. Well, for us, 
That's Sunday now. That's Saturday night, the vigil of Sunday. Sunday begins Saturday evening. That, that's a liturgical fact. Keep it holy. Now, it's true that some of you have to work on Sunday. My mother, when I was growing up, my mother often worked on Sunday. She's a registered nurse, and somebody's got to take care of sick people. So she didn't, she couldn't go to church sometimes. We didn't have any visual masses back then. Uh, and she used to, being a good Catholic, she hated it, you know, she, but she had to work her shift when it fell on a Sunday. Otherwise, the sick people, they wouldn't have any care. Uh, so would she come in to sin? No, no. She had a good reason, taking care of a sick child at home. You can't get the mass? All right, you're sick yourself? Okay. Listen, please listen. Missing Mass on Sundays or Holy Days of Obligation without a good reason is a mortal sin. Objectively taken. I don't care what upstart theologian tells you otherwise. It is a serious sin. Do not do it. And you say, why? Why? I mean, why is that so bad? Look, most of us wouldn't think of depriving our body of food even one day. You know, most of you eat once a day. Now, how about giving your soul a good meal once a week to sustain it for the race? Go to Mass on Sunday and Holy Days of Obligation. Why? Because you need it. You need it. If you find that you are in sin and if you fall into temptation, and, you know, people come all the time, oh, Father, I can't get out of that sin. I'm addicted to drugs, to pornography, to this, that, the other thing. I said, well, <clears throat> you know, I'm a physician at that point. i got to make a diagnosis. Okay, the man's sick, and here's what's sick about it. I say, okay, here's the prescription. Go to confession and start going to Mass regularly. That'll heal you. That'll give you strength. You've got to do it. You've got to repent and believe in the gospel. For honor your father and your mother. They entered into the creative power of God himself and gave you life. And even if they abused you, you've got to love them. And remember, love is not a feeling, folks. Love is not a feeling. Love is not merely an emotion. Love is a decision. That's what love is. Love is an act of the will. Please don't forget that. Oh, but I can't love that person. What they really mean is I don't have no feelings for that person. You can decide to love somebody. Many, many, many a day, I do not feel like getting up 1, 2 o'clock in the morning to drive three hours to an airport to fly around the country, land, and preach after I'm exhausted from that long day. I don't feel like doing it. I do it. I just do it. I make a decision. Love is a decision, an act of the will. Number five, you shall not kill. I remember when I was a kid, when I'd go to confession, I knew the commandments. We had to learn. And I'd examine my conscience. I'd go, number five, thou shalt not kill. Well, oh, didn't do that this week. I was free and clear. Wrong. It doesn't just mean commit murder. Yes, it does mean that. It does mean abortion or having some part in, in a procured abortion. But it also means anger where you let the anger control you. Now, anger in itself is not a sin. St. Peter himself says, if you are angry, uh, let it not be unto sin. Right? Uh, so anger in itself is an emotion. But what do you do with that emotion? And do you hurt people with it? Do you hurt yourself with it? Or do you control it? You know, when you control something like that, not only do you not sin, you give glory to God. So number five, don't be fighting. Don't be fighting with each other. Uh, don't be uh, verbally pounding each other. Don't beat each other up. That's a sin against the fifth commandment when you hurt people that way. St. James says the tongue is a mighty weapon. I'll guarantee you it is a mighty weapon for better or for worse. Number six, you shall not commit adultery. Well, yes, that means you cannot have sexual relations with anyone other than your spouse. You know, yes, it means that. That's adultery. But it also touches on the whole realm 
of sexual sins. Now, I could spend a very long time teaching and preaching on this subject. Uh, let it be said that, in, in a word to the wise is sufficient. One time, our blessed mother at Fatima said, more souls fall into hell because of sins against purity than any other reason. Now, it's not the only serious sin, but I, you have to mention it today. Now, whenever I get talking on moral things, I get some of the very, very few negative pieces of correspondence that I get. I'll tell you something. For every thousand, for every thousand letters, emails, and so forth that I get, I get about one bad one. I get about a thousand positive good ones thanking me for every one that's negative. But I do get a few of the negative. And I wear it as a badge of honor. And they don't go like this, oh, you're nothing but a Christian moralist. Like, that's something bad? Where are you coming from? Or oh, like the woman who grabbed me after I preached my first homily in my home parish after I was ordained. I've told this story a million times, but uh, I preached, uh, you know, it was a mo one of those readings from the gospel, very, very moral. It, it said something like, uh, you know, no thief, no liar, no fornicator will ever enter the kingdom of heaven, the gospel said, you know. I came home from Rome after being ordained. I'm going to celebrate my first mass in my home parish. I took, I had to look at the readings for the next day because I had to preach on it, right? I read that gospel. I took one look at that and I said, oh, no. I'm in my hometown, see, these people know me. But I had made a promise to God when I was ordained, look, I'm going to preach on what your word says. I'm not going to make up some silly stuff of my own. I'm not going to pre pre preach my mere personal opinions. I'm going to preach the word of God. So, But first time out in your hometown, you don't want to overdo it. So I made a resolution to myself, okay, I'm going to go do it. I'll say a little bit, five, ten minutes, not too heavy, not too hard, and that's it. I'm out of there. Yeah, all right. I went in there, and I hit every moral aberration from A to Z. You name it, and I pounded it. The walls were shaking. Fifteen minutes, a half hour, forty minutes. I could see the pastor over in the corner, man, sweat coming down his head. The four symbols of the Holy Ghost, dove, fire, water, and candlestick lamp. We have the three candles representing the Holy Trinity. The Holy Ghost is here, the Holy Ghost is here, the Holy Ghost is here. We have the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Blessed Candle. There will be the final video after this, okay? Okay, Angel. Angel, bye bye now, Angel. Bye bye. Bye bye. Smile, Angel. Smile. Angel, bye bye. Okay, smile. Show your teeth, Angel. Bye bye now. <laughs>